So, you're a feminist now. No. Oh, I'm a, I'm a feminist now? Oh, I didn't know it was that easy. I thought I had to sacrifice my firstborn son to become a feminist, but... Oh, okay. Wait, Wait a minute! Wait a minute! I thought men can only be feminist allies. And it's about to get problematic up in here. Hello everyone, Lacey Green here. Last week I checked out the VMAs and, well, it was definitely a new experience for me. I saw a lot of celebrities, aka very problematic people. I'm not gonna lie, man. The only reason I'm doing this video response is because Lacey Green's cleavage is showing and I need something good to look at. Was that sexist or problematic? Miley Cyrus was wearing dreadlocks. The Taylor Swift preaches a feminism that's far from intersectional. The weekend calls women bitches and hoes. What's a girl to do at the VMAs? A lot of people in the anti-feminist camp tell me that they find the problematic analysis a big turnoff. And the reason why is because it's very subjective. You find all these things problematic. I can find them to be just fine. Who wins, Lacey? There's no objective standard of which to call something problematic. It's just all based on your subjective feelings, and I can tell you to go shut up. See how easy it is? Problem solved. Feminists and non-feminists alike have told me that they feel like they're not allowed to enjoy anything anymore. Well, there's another very simple answer to that. You know, feminists can't enjoy anything because they think everything is sexist and everything is racist and everything is problematic, when it's really not. Regular people can't enjoy anything because, well, it's fucking boring. Anti-feminists can't enjoy anything anymore because they're made to feel sexist or racist for enjoying the things they enjoy because of feminists. In other words, it's, it's all feminists' fault. I mean, I'm just saying, complaining about things that don't need to be complained about? Hmm? Hmm? Does that sound like somebody we know? Lacey? Okay, we need to talk about that. When feminists say something's problematic, they're usually referring to words, behaviors, ideas, tropes, stereotypes, and so forth that are factually inaccurate and ultimately harm women, people of color, the LGBT community, and so forth. You know what? I am actually really happy that there is finally a criteria for something to be problematic. However, I'm even more happy because more, just plain and nay, we can once again see, my friends. How biased feminism is. The true nature of feminism has been revealed to us once again. Notice in that definition, problematic has nothing to do if it's harmful stereotypes about men. Now, and then another thing I was thinking about the other day was uh, when people say people of color. And uh, the literal part of me kind of immediately thinks, well, wouldn't everyone technically be a person of color? I mean, you know, black, brown, I mean, white is also a color, and when white people get embarrassed, they blush, so they can become red, so wouldn't white people also be people of color, since white is a color? I mean, if translucent people existed, you know, that they have no color at all, I can understand why you need to differentiate people of color, but since white is a color, and black's a color, and even Mexican and Chinese people are sometimes pale, and they also have colors, wouldn't everyone technically be a person of color? Hmm. 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 Also, people of color is rather racist, don't you think? And another thing is, once again, we have a definition that doesn't give a two shit flying fuck about things that are stereotypical about men. But you tell me feminists care about men's plight. Hmm, lazy. Hmm. I'm just saying. It kind of sounds like your definition of problematic is problematic. Let me first say, the practice of talking about problematic shit is a crucial part of doing feminism. We have to identify harmful behaviors and words to actively discourage them. You know, maybe, now just maybe, instead of actively trying to discourage these people from saying these words, we spend time trying to create strong human beings who don't get bothered by the words or the actions. Maybe we can create competent adults who can deal with their issues and problems whenever things come up against them. Maybe we can deal with kids who can stand up to bullies whenever bullies are trying to talk that good shit. You know, a wise man once said, I do not pray for an easy life. I pray for the strength to endure a hard one. Maybe we should try to teach people and adults, well this more starts with children, to be strong and deal with things instead of trying to be you know, totalitarian, authoritative people trying to control language and action so people's feelings don't get hurt. Just a suggestion. 
This promotes a more just and equal world. So keep your eyes open, baby, and have those conversations even when they're challenging and uncomfortable. You know, honestly, I do agree with Lazy Green. These conversations should be had. Except the thing is, whenever I talk to feminists, they will quite honestly dismiss most of the things I say and call me misogynistic and sexist and all of that. I have been able to chat with some feminists, though. Not all feminists are jackasses. Some of them are kind of nice people. They just don't see the whole world for what it is. And I think those are really my more target audience when it comes to talking about feminists and feminism. I'm just saying, you know, I, I do agree with Lacey, she's right. But the interesting thing is whenever I talk ill of sluts, and not really ill, just so much my distaste for having sex with them, lots of people think I'm being mean and sexist. Even though, honestly, I don't really think anyone should have a bunch of promiscuous sex, but they don't talk about that because reasons. That said, we are living in times of rapid communication. Hello, internet. On the web, I found that people are either queens or scum. Where? We're either outraged or fangirling. Yes, but where? On Tumblr? Where? We speak the language of 140 characters, a rebloggable picture or gif, a six second vine. There's no room for nuance or gray areas. You know, Lacey, I call you stupid because I don't really think that you're dumb. You know, I don't really think you're an idiot. I just think some of the things you say are really stupid. But Lacey, I am seriously worrying about your ability to think. I am really worried about your mental cognition, if you genuinely think that. Lacey, where on the internet are you? People can have gray areas anywhere on the web. Now, Lacey, if you are trying to tell me that people themselves are oftentimes one end of the extreme, I would agree to a certain extent. Yes, of course, there are lots of people, you know, left, right wing, conservative, liberal, all on that political spectrum bullshit. And that would be right. You, I couldn't argue with that. But if you're going to sit here and fucking tell me that there's literally nowhere on the internet where you can have a gray area and chat with people, you're either lying, you don't know what you're talking about, or you're stupid. In fact, I should not even actually have to give a single example of places on the internet where you can have conversations and discussions about things. But in case you're one of those people who believe what Lacey Green just said, there are literally millions, probably not millions, but hundreds of thousands of forums. I mean, there's like Return of Kings, there's even different forums you can get on, even for fucking porn websites. There's forums for porn websites, man. Forums for games, forums, just even psychology forums. You can go to blogs in the comment section there, YouTube comment sections. Hell, you can even do that on Tumblr, even though I know lots of... Crazy feminists are on Tumblr, they're regular people on Tumblr too, but you can do it on Tumblr. You, uh, you can do that in you can do that in your fucking email. I shouldn't have to explain that. But just for the people who think that Lacey Green is right, there you go. Keep going, Lacey. But it's in the gray areas that our complexity as human beings lies. The truth is, literally everyone and everything is problematic. This Fuck this. I'm done. I'm done. No. No! 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 Fuck this! No! 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 I whoa! Whoa! Serious. Serious, man. Just, just calm down for a minute. Alright, you know, let's let's just hear her out. I said of this shit! I'm not doing this anymore! No! Fuck! No! 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 Everything! So everything is fucking problematic! Everything! You know, maybe, maybe she didn't mean literally, you know? Literally can mean figuratively sometimes, you know? And come on, let's just listen. <laughs> what? I can't take it anymore. I can't. I can't do it. I can't. I can't. Lazy turn me into a white girl because I fucking can't even. Fuck! I can't. I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. The other day, I sent Morella. I sent Morella. I said. Have a good day, beautiful! Am I sexist? Because I said have a good day, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> yes, you can. Alright? You can finish the video. You can do it. Alright? 
Just calm down for a second. I can't do it. I can't. I can't eat it, man. I can't eat it. Ugh. Do you remember that shit you pulled with me in Onision? Remember when you made me finish that video when I didn't want to finish that shit? Let's just hear her out, and let's just see what she has to say. Continue, Lacey. Search for feminist perfection will cause burnout because there's no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Oh, she had one shot. Fuck. Are you serious? So you mean to tell me that there is no solution for feminism? That there is no way to, to fix the All of us have been born into a culture that teaches us toxic behaviors and words that actively harm other people. So it should come as no surprise that amazing things in this world, books and movies, TV shows, music and people, are also flawed. They can be both at the same time. Lacey, genuinely serious question. Who is your target? demographic. Lacey, you very clearly are not trying to talk to children because your subject matter goes above the heads of these fourth graders. But it can't be adults because anyone with a functioning cognitive system can freaking know that. So Lacey, who are you trying to talk to here? Why? Is it that when I watch your stuff, I feel mentally insulted by how simplistically stupid it is? To improve, we need to encourage unlearning in our dialogue. Are you serious? Unlearning. Unlearning. I'm just gonna forget shit. Ah, bleh, delete. Let me just get. Ah. Uh, ah. Yeah, I had a roller skate and it just, just fucked that roller skating thing. Goodbye. Yeah, see you later. How to eat with chopsticks? No, you can go fuck yourself, chopsticks. Mm mm. You can go away. That's racist. That's cultural appropriation. Eating with chopsticks? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You can get out of here with that. We have to actively unlearn racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, ableism, and all manner of oppressions. You know, the interesting thing about all that, Lacey, is that of course starts with the presupposition that you will learn these things. Uh, I never learned how to be racist, because I like everybody. Uh, I'm not homophobic. Don't have any problem with gay people. Not transphobic. If trans people want to be trans, that's okay. Do, don't do your thing. Uh, am I ableist? No, I don't have any issue with disabled people. So uh, none of those things. I never learn any of those things. In other words, I must be the perfect feminist because I'm neither racist, I'm not sexist, I'm not homophobic, I'm not transphobic, and I'm not ableist. I'm none of those things. I don't have to unlearn anything. So, why is it that people call me sexist? Oh, because I say pretty blunt things about ladies. Not necessarily mean, just blunt. It kind of seems that these words only get thrown out and tossed out when you say something about women, gay people, transphobic people, even disabled people, that you don't like or want to hear. It really kind of seems that all of those words, which would be reasonable to use if people actually hated or was afraid of these people, are actually used as buzzwords in order to silence or try to create groupthink. Kind of sounds like what you really mean, Lacey, is you need to unlearn individuality and learn collectivism so that we all think and agree on the same thing. So no one ever gets offended or gets their feelings hurt. Because once again, the only time I've ever been called misogynistic, homophobic, or even transphobic is when I said things about these groups of people someone didn't want to hear. Not when I was mean or discriminating against them. Because I never have. Wrap us up, Lacey. And that is a lifelong process. In that process, we can absolutely digest media in a way that allows joy and entertainment of the overall person or media while rejecting its harmful aspects. 
Fuck you. It's important to acknowledge problematic aspects and not make excuses for them. Oh, fuck you, fuck you. Then initiate the discussion about what could and should change. Fuck you, fuck you. Try to do so in the spirit of encouraging learning and growth rather than judgment and shame. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Mm, oh my god, stop you fucking lying. Lacey, who are you trying to fool? Hmm? Who, who, are you, who are you trying to convince? Me or you? I, I, that, that, that's false. That's a lie and you know it's a lie. Like a cheerleader, I think it's important to have positive spaces for people to make steps toward change. If they feel overly criticized, they tend to shut down. I've also found that it's important to create positive spaces for myself, which sometimes means zoning out and taking a break from feminist analysis. It should never become an all-consuming shadow on life. That just ain't healthy. You know, and it's this kind of stuff right here that actually makes me worry for the mental health of a lot of these feminists, especially if they think that everything is problematic. Now, if you've been subscribed to my channel for quite some time, you should know this by now, that um, I'm an actor. Basically, I just pretend to be other people. You know, and Zeus and Zarius, the guy who wears the white shirt, are characters. You know, and my real name is Zarius. So I write all the comedy and all the jokes and I edit and I do all of this stuff. So this is the first video you've ever seen. Well, now you know. So I'm coming at you guys with some real talk. Some real nigga type shit. I truly in my heart do believe that we should start really focusing on trying to become strong human beings instead of trying to fix everything and everyone. The reason why I say that is because on YouTube I've noticed we have this thing of the blind leading the blind. Uh, basically, there's lots of damaged narcissists here on YouTube who have millions of subscribers who are depressed and sad, leading flocks of other depressed and sad people. And someone needs to bring attention to that. Lacey is one of those people. Uh, Grace Helbig is another one, just off the top of my head. I am really, to be honest, kind of sad that we have so many weak-minded people in our society. And like I said during the course of the video, the wise words that really mean a lot to me is that we should not pray for an easy life. We should pray for the strength to endure a difficult one. We shouldn't strive to have all these safe places all the time, or safe spaces, but we should strive to be strong enough to deal with the true injustices that we see or that we meet via on the internet, and of course, in reality. Instead of whining about nonsensical things like a white woman with dreadlocks, let's actually talk about the fact that men and women are truly beginning to despise one another and how that's sad and disheartening and these feminists aren't doing a damn thing to try to stop that. I want to leave you guys once again with this. We should all strive to be the best we can be and to challenge ourselves and grow throughout the course of our lives. So. With that being said, man, I certainly hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you did, man, go ahead and click that like button. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Comment in the comment box below. And as always, have a great day. I will see you cool cats soon. Adios.